Hello all, welcome to this session. In this session, I'm going to answer one of the Selenium interview questions. That is, what is the importance of testNG XML file? Let me answer. One of the importance of this testNG XML file is running the things as should. Okay, instead of running the test methods from an individual class, we can run the test methods from all the classes as a suit. Okay, with the help of testNG XML file, this is one of the advantage or importance of using testNG XML file. Let me practically show you this one. I'll switch to this Eclipse ID where we have the sample testNG project. And here we have multiple classes, class one, class two, class three. Each and every class has individual test methods. You see, class one has two test methods. That is a C1 test one, okay, class one test two, like that, okay. And here class two, for sample is having class two, test one, class two, test two. And class three also, for sample is having class three, test one and class three, test two, okay. These are the test methods we have. If I run only individual class, okay. For example, if I right click on class one and uh, say run as test ng test, only the test methods which are there in the class one will run. Okay. Only the test methods inside the class one will run. For example, if you see here, C1 test one, C1 test only class one test methods got run. Okay. But what if I have to run all the three classes and including its test methods? Okay. All the test methods in all the three classes, I take what I want to run. For that, I have to take the help of the testNG XML file. In the testNG XML file, we have to specify all these three classes. Okay. So if I run this particular testNG XML file, whatever the classes that are mentioned and it test methods will be running. Okay. The two test methods on the class two, class one, class two, class three. total six test methods need to run together. Okay. Run it. Okay. So you see two test methods, two test methods, total six test methods got run, which is working fine. So here this is the first advantage. Second advantage is with the help of the testNG XML file, we can decide the order of running the decide the order of running the things. For example, here, since class one is mentioned, class one test methods got executed first. For example, you see class one, class one, related test methods got executed first. Then class two is mentioned, hence class two test methods got executed next. Then class three is mentioned. That's the reason class three test methods got executed. This, these are the print statements we have written inside the individual test methods here, you see. This test method, uh, if, the, if this particular test method is executed, this statement is getting printed in the output console. That's how it is working. So what I will do here is I'll just change the order. For example, I think it's running. Okay, fine. I'll just copy this class three and I'll place it here. So this time what will happen? This time class three related. Okay, I'm, I'm changing the order in which the tests are going to run. The class three related test methods are going to run first, then class one, then class two. Okay, let's see whether uh, the changes happened or not. It's always same, okay. See first class three test methods got executed first. You see class three print statements got printed. Okay. Then class one, then class two, depending on the order in which you have provided this classes, the same order in same order, the test inside the classes will run. Okay. So not only this order uh, individually in, inside the class, uh, you can provide methods, method order, whatever the order you specify in the test in XML file that will be followed. Okay. This is another importance of using test in XML file to decide the order of running the things. Then set up parallel execution. If you want to run the test in a parallel way, okay. So we have to simply in testng.xml file, you have to go to the testng.xml file and enable the parallel execution. Okay, without testng XML file, we cannot enable the parallel execution. Here we have one attribute known as parallel is equal to, and we have to give let's say parallel is equal to test. Okay. Parallel is equal to test. Like that, you can write. Okay. Parallel is equal to uh uh, classes, let's write whatever it is. Okay. You can write tests, you can write classes. This parallel attribute need to be provided at the suit level or whatever the test tag level, whatever it is. And this will enable the parallel execution. You will not see the reference here, but they are executing parallelly. Okay. The tests are executing parallelly. In this example, you cannot see, but this how we can uh, use the testng.xml file to enable the parallel execution. Okay. Then decide which tests are groups to run. Okay. We can decide which tests to run, which groups to run using include exclude things. For example, here, I don't want to run all the tests from class one. I don't want to run all the test methods from class one, only one test method I want to run. For that, instead of self-closing the tag here, I'll just uh, write like this, slash class, okay? Inside this, I'll write methods. Inside the methods, I will write include, okay? Include name is equal to only the name of the method that you want to run, you want to provide here, okay? 
what is the name of the method in the class one you want to run? For example, in the class one, there are two test methods, C1 test one, C1 test two. I want to run only C1 test one. I don't want to run C1 test two. Okay, copy this and uh, go here, paste it. For now, remove the parallel execution. It will confuse us otherwise. Okay, C1 test one and uh, let's uh, give in a proper order itself. First class one test method should run, then class two, then class three test method should run. But in the class one, only one test method will run, which is included here. So this kind of things we can decide, okay, which tests we need to run, okay. We can decide the only, if I don't specify this class, no test methods from this class will be executed. For now, I'm deciding inside the class, only this method should run. Let's see whether that is happening or not. Inside the class one, only C1 test method should run. Other test, C, uh, test two methods should not run. You see only five test methods got run. One of the test method from the class one has not run. Only test one from the class one has run. Test two from class one has not run, okay. This is the level of, for example, if I remove this, uh, the, the class one class itself from this uh, test in XML file, then it will not run any of the test methods. Okay. This level of customization we can do. We can decide which class can run. Okay. We can decide which methods inside the class can run. All these things we can do. Decide which tests or classes or groups to run. Uh, then groups, what about groups? For example, if I specify some groups and uh, I can decide which groups to run, which groups not to run, that level of customization is also there. Okay, I don't want to go there, but uh, okay, that is a different thing. Okay, so we can specify the groups. Uh, we can categorize the groups. For example, if you go to the class one, you can uh, we can specify this. For example, if I beside this, I can mention groups is equal to just give some name of the group. For example, more group here from the descent.xml file, I can mention that particular group and I can run only that particular group. Okay, that is also possible. Then path to listeners. Okay. In the testng.xml file, we can also specify the path to the listeners. And there's a so tag you just write down listeners, like this listeners, L I S T E N E R S. Uh, and under the listeners, uh, you have to provide the listener tag. I cannot explain everything in detail in this session, but I can give you uh, this self closing tag. And uh, here, we have to give the class name, okay, listener class hyphen. We have to give the path of the we have to give the path where the listeners class is available in this project. It is not there, but uh, okay. For listeners configuration also, we have to use the testng.xml file. At a high level, I'm covering the stuff. Okay. So you can do more R and D on these things, or you can follow my other uh, previously explained, uh, you know, uh, things. Okay. In my, in my previous videos, you can find all the answers, how to do all these individual things. Then categorize into different uh, tests and achieve customization, categorize into different tests and achieve customization uh, then so here uh, here here only one test is there i can create one more test uh, we can create multiple tests here okay here only one test is there second test third test and here i'll say login test okay here only class two i'll mention for example or set of classes also you can mention not a problem here uh, class three i'll mention here i'll say register test like this i can create a multiple test. This kind of customization, grouping classes under multiple test tags is possible. Okay. Here, uh, class one. Like this. Okay. Done. Like this, multiple tests we can create. We can uh, customize this or uh, we can do a lot of customization. Okay. Categorize into different tests and all the stuff. Specify test in the XML file path in form for running. For example, if you want to run this, okay. So without Maven also, we can run for now. For example, if I run this testng.xml file, it will run, not a problem. It will run all the things, okay? All the total six out of six tests got run because uh, as part of different, uh, as part of different, right? Tests, it has run. Then next thing is, uh, if I want to run this uh, these things with the help of Maven, then simply I have to provide the path of the testng.xml file in the palm.xml file, okay? Go to the palm.xml file, and the palm.xml file, just go to this Maven Surefire plugin. So you have to customize this plugin here. How to customize? You have to write down uh, Maven, Maven Surefire, Maven, then Surefire, space, test engine. Just write down, you will you'll be given one link. Just uh, click on that link. It will be taken to this page. You just scroll down until you find this uh, thing. You see, plugin to plugin, you copy this part. Okay, here, you see, suit XML file is there, test engine is there. Copy that and go to that form.xml file in your project and replace this plugin with whatever the plugin I copied. Okay, the same Maven Surefire plugin, 
But the thing here is I can organize this. Well. But the thing here is you have to specify the dexng.xml file. The dexng.xml file is directly available in the project. So this is a part of the dexng.xml file. Now, after this, save this and uh, now we have to run. Okay, right click on the palm.xml file and say run as uh, uh, I think Maven test. Select this Maven test. And with the help of Maven, we are running palm.xml file. Palm.xml file is invoking the testng.xml file. Testng.xml file will invoke all these test methods inside the classes. That's the process. Indirectly, we are running the testng.xml file with the help of uh, Maven. Okay, Let's see what will happen. The tests are running. You see, all the tests got executed, but this time I have run the test with the help of Maven. That is possible only when I specify this testng.xml file in the palm.xml file. Okay, there's another advantage of using the testng.xml file. Without testng.xml file, Maven cannot run the test even. Okay, if Maven is unable to run the test, you know, uh, that uh, Jenkins and all those things will become difficult. So, this is how important uh, the testng.xml file is, uh, okay, in our projects. So, these are the different, uh, in different things, okay, we need to understand regarding the testng.xml file. And uh, so, that's all for this session. Thank you. Bye-bye.